Hello, it's me, Tech Bosola, and I'm doing a chapter that's not from the other chapters of the afterlife. Um, this one's kind of hidden, which is why I'm focusing on this one. It's on in book six, um, chapter 20, 29, and it's about um, Siwa Trampa. This is where um, women who died at childbirth go. So it's one of those things that you would think in chapter three, when they're talking about the three afterlives, when there's more, there's like two, there's another one after this one, that you would think they would all be in the same book. But once you read more of the books and chapters, you find out, oh, the other one, if, once I get to that point, you're going to be like, okay, I would have never thought it would be in that subject. But <laughs> anyway, that's how very confusing. This is pretty long. So let's begin. 29th chapter. Here is told how they made goddesses of those women who died in childbirth called Mosiwaketske. Um, Mosiwaketske are women who, um, I guess, what they be, well, women who die in childbirth become. And it explains more later on here. Um, they believe in them as they did in the Siwatete, which is way different than Mosiwaketse. Uh, um, but eventually, Mo Siwaketskets can become Siwatetels, but that's a long other story, another book chapter. <laughs> and they took from them their hair or some part of their bodies. They believed that in these as relics. They took they took these relics from their first before they buried them. And it is necessary that the priests would t make known to themselves the different things regarding those who died in childbirth. They named them Mosiwaketske, and the place where the sunset is said they named Siwa Lampa after them. And if the parent dared not that of the midwife do this, then the midwife enclosed the little woman, woman which is a reference to the previous chapter. Um, so this chapter is in between um, a midwife preparing for a woman to give birth. The chapter after that is about um, what happens when the woman dies. And then the chapter after this is when it's successful. And usually in, I guess now in mythology, you always, at least belief system, it's always you focus on the, per, the worst case scenario before you focus on the positive. <laughs> um, and if the parents dare not that the midwife do this, then the midwife enclosed the little woman. And if she died in childbirth, it is said that she was named Mo Siwatketske. And when she had died, then they bathed her. They washed her head with soap. They dressed her in a good new skirt and shift. And as they carried her, as they went to bury her, her husband bore her upon his back. His hair went loose. It went covering her. And the midwives, the old women, assembled to accompany her. They bore this, their shields and went shouting, howling, yelling. It is said that they went crying. They gave war cries. These called the youth. Those who task were yet warfare went encountering them, went skirmishing against them. And they went skirmishing against them as they desired to seize the, the woman. It is not plain fighting not plundering. When they fought, they truly made war. And as it became night, they bore this little woman to bury her there before the images of their, um, says devil, um, devils, but I think it's supposed to be something else. Um, even the Nahuatl text says diablo me. So it's supposed to be something else to that context. Um, whom, and it explains what they are here, whom they name Siwa Pipiltin, um, sometimes um, spelled as Siwa Pipiltli, um, Pilti, sorry, <laughs> celestial princesses. And when they had bore her, then they buried her. They placed her in the earth, but her husband and still others helped to guard her for four nights that no one might steal her. And they who went the youth, those who 
whose duty was warfare ardently desired her. It is said careful vir vigils were held over her. They consider her just something wonderful. If along the road they rest rest the body of the Mo um, Siwaketsuki from the midwives in their presence, they cut off their middle finger. And if it could dig her up by night, they also cut off her finger. And they clipped off and they took her hair from her. And it explains more. I know it sounds kind of weird, but more chapter goes here more. Behold the reason they diligently sought the finger, the hair of the Mo Siwaketsuki when they went to war, they inserted the hair of the finger or the finger in their shields in order to be valiant, in order to be brave warriors, in order that no one might contend against them, in order that no one might stand up against them, in order that they might act boldly in war, in order that they might overpower, might seize many of their enemies. It is said that the hair, the finger of the Mosiwatsuketsuke, furnished spirit. It was said that they paralyzed the feet of their foes. Also the Thebes, those whose name name was Temakpatitotike, see what happens when you say that word, a regular word, diligently sought the Mosiwaketsuke. They took her left forearm. They said they bore it with them when they robbed. Therewith, they caused the member of the household to swoon. So yeah, usually if you see some um, art from some codices, you'll see like a hand on a shield, and that's supposed to be the dead woman's hand. So that's what they're referring in that section. Um, and of this Mosiwa Ketsuke, although they, there was weeping, there was sorrow because she had died in childbirth when she had really died it was said that she becomes a mosiwatsuketsuke her parents and the husband rejoiced therefore even more for it was said that she went not to the land of the dead she went there to the to the skies to the heavens i guess you could say in, in english and in spanish say heavens but it's a sky to the house of the sun um donatiu ichan so the house of the sun pretty much <laughs> Thus it is the tale, the consensus of the ancients, the brave warriors, the, the eagle jaguar warriors, those who died in war, went there to the house of the sun, and they lived there in the east, where the sun rose. And when the sun was about to emerge, when it was still dark, they arrayed themselves, they armed themselves as for war, met the sun as it emerged, brought it forth, came giving cries for it, came gladdening it came skirmishing me. Before it, they came rejoicing. They came to leave it there at the zenith, called the mid midday sun. So that's warriors giving it to women at that point. And here's a story of the tale of the women who had died in war and of the Mosiwaketsuke. It is said that the women who have died in war and the Mosiwaketsuke lived there in the falling place, the um, <clears throat> entering place of the sun. For this reason, the old people who, those who went recording things, named the place where the sun entered um, Siwa Lampa, because the women lived there. And when the sun had emerged, when already it had advanced along its course, when those who had died in war, the brave warriors already came gladdening it, came giving cries for it, when this sun had already advanced along its course. Then the women array themselves, armed themselves as for war, took the shields, the devices. Then they rose up. They came ascending to meet the noonday sun there. There the eagle jaguar warriors held the sun in their hands. There these eagle jaguar warriors, those who had died in war, delivered the sun into the hands of the women. And then the warriors scattered out everywhere, sipping, sucking, and the different flowers. Um, the women then began, they carried, they brought down the sun. They carried it to the litter of Quetzal feathers. It traveled in Quetzal feathers. They provided it a support. And as they bore it, they also went giving cries for it. They went gladding it. They went gladding it with war cries. They left it there as it said that the sun entered. 
It is said that they deliver it to the hands of the Miteca, that is, the people of Mictlan, the inhabitants of Mictlan, that is, the dead who carried it there to Mictlan. Thus the old people went saying, when it grew dark here is already grew light, it dawned in Mitlan. The dead awakened, they arose, and there I mean and these women who delivered this son into the hands of the Miteca then also dispersed. They came, they dis descended to earth. They took, they sought the spindle, the weaving stick, the reed basket, they sought all the equipment of women. And then here's the weird part because it's also in the English is also what they say in the Spanish, but in the Nahua it's way different things. So this is where I have to explain. So they say the demon, the devil, which um, the devil, demonio, in Spanish. But in the Nahua text, the first word, the demon, in Nahua is um, tisi meat, and then the devil part is um, in the Nahua text is koletli, which is um, another word for spirit. Um, so it should say the tisi meat, the um, kolit letli um, deceive in this manner many times. Um, so they also in the Spanish and English they put he when it should be she. It should be feminine. So I am going to say this part as feminine just so there is no confusion. So the tisi meat, the the kolit. Um, deceive in this manner many times she manifested manifested herself she appeared before one like one who has become a mosiwatsketsi she addressed she encountered the ones who have been um, her husband um, she sought she demanded the skirt the shift all the equipment of women and these little women who thus had died in childbirth those said to have become Mosiwaketsis. Um, when they died, they said become goddesses. Um, Onteo, um, as the Nahua text says. Um, then the midwife addressed, greeted, prayed to the one still resting there, still laid out. She said to her, Chamotzin, my youngest one. Um, Kwao Siwat, little one, little dove. My beloved maiden, thou hast performed thy office, thou hast done thy work, thou beloved task is done, thou hast behaved in conformity, thou thy mother, Siwapili, Kuat Siwat, um, Siwat Kuat, um, Kuilatsli, thou hast taken, raised up, used the shield, the little shield which they, thou love, mother, Siwapili, Siwat Kuat, place in thou hand and now awaken arise stand forth for already the, it is day already in dawn if the morning half um, reddened the dawn half is set in already the flame colored cock the flame colored shallow swallow sing the various flame colored um, roseate spoon bill sing arise stand forth arise thou or take thyself to know the good place, the pleasing place, the home of thy mother, thy father, the son, where there are gladness, contentment, joy, happiness. Go, accompany our mother, our father, the son. May his older sisters, um, Siwat Piltin, the celestial women, bring the, thee to him. Those who are always glad, content, joyous, happy by and near our mother, our father, the son, whom they gladden, to whom they cry out. My youngest one, my beloved maiden, my noble woman, thou hast suffered fatigue, thou hast suffered man manfully, um, thou hast acquired our Lord's place of destroying one, his place of hiding one. Seeing that thou hast now suffered affliction, thou hast done penance, thou hast deserved, thou hast merit the good, the pleasing, the precious death. It is possible that thou diest without purpose. Hast thou simply died? For thou hast already done penance. Who deserveth what thou hast merited? For thou, thou wilt forever live. Be glad, be content near, and by our goddess the Siwal Piltin. 
Fare thee well, my beloved maiden, my child. Arrive with them, enter among them, and may they take thee, many they receive thee. With them gladden, cry out to our mother, our father, the son, and go accompany them whenever their pleasure can um, them. And my youngest one, my beloved maiden, my lady, thou hast left us, thou hast abandoned us, we who are the old men who are the old women. Thou hast arisen to cast thyself to thy mother, thy father. Hast thou willed thou thou be summoned, that thou be given called forth? Because of thy absence are we to be lost? Because of this, the misery of age manhood, the age womanhood, will be glorious. Because of this, our lady, are we to be lost among the enclosure. Concern thyself with us, remember us in our misery, how we seek, how we are imprisoned here on earth. For verily the sun, the wind, the cold, the freezing tire us. Truly our body wither, suffer chills, and verily we are possessed with hunger which we cannot ensure, endure. Visit us, my precious maiden, valiant valiant women, um, noble woman, and truly thou hast gone to rest in peace, for already thou livest in a good place, a pleasing place, and already thou live by and near our Lord, for already thou behost in the Lord, for already thou converse this with the Lord. Pray for us, intercede for us, this is all. With this we leave it to thee. So that's the end of that chapter. Um, anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and take care.